Do you struggle with understanding object-oriented programming? Don't worry, we got you! So what is object-oriented programming? Object-oriented programming, or simply OOP, sometimes called class-based programming, is a way to model real-world objects as software objects, which contain both data and code. But what do we mean by real-world objects? Have a look around the area we're sitting in right now. Name the first few things that you see. I see my laptop, a couch, and... Those are examples of real-world objects. Real-world objects have two major components, state and behavior. An object's state are the characteristics about the object that can describe it, while behavior are actions that can be performed by the said object or upon the object. For example, the laptop's state may include its RAM, its size, or its color. Its behaviors may include booting up or shutting down. In OOP, software objects store state in fields, or what we also call variables and attributes, and expose behavior through methods or the actions that an object can perform or receive. Organizing code into objects helps developers break down complex software into manageable, reusable, and maintainable parts, making development easier and scalable. Encapsulation, also known as information or data hiding, is the ability of an object to hide its data or fields and some methods from outside access, protecting the data from unintended changes. It allows controlled access through a setter or mutator and a getter or accessor method, improving maintenance and flexibility. I don't understand. Okay, think of it this way. Your object is a car, and inside every typical car are complex parts like the engine and fuel system. These are what we call fields. They are things that you can't directly access. Instead, you drive using simple controls, steering wheel, pedals, buttons, which are like methods that let you use the car without messing with the complex parts. Similarly, encapsulation hides complexity and provides safe, simple access. Ooh, so similar to how using simple car controls lets you avoid messing with complex parts, encapsulation lets you access only the fields you need through well-defined methods and sharing interactions only with what you intend. Exactly! While we're here, I might as well teach you about another one of the pillar concepts of OOP. In OOP, a class can inherit attributes and methods from another class. This is called inheritance. The class that inherits is called a subclass or child or derived class, while the class it inherits from is called a superclass or parents or base class. The subclass can add unique properties and modify inherited ones, promoting code reuse, reducing redundancy, and organizing code hierarchically. All these new words are confusing me. <sighs> Alright, I'll give you an example. Let's have a look at this diagram. Each part on it represents a class. Animal is the top superclass, and all other classes below it are subclasses. A parent class can have multiple children, like mammal being the parents of dog and cat subclasses. Although a child has only one direct parent, it can inherit from its parent's parent as well. So dog inherits attributes and methods from animal too. I feel myself getting smarter! But how will I know if I should be using inheritance in my code? That's a great question. You see, inheritance in Java works when there's an is-a relationship. For example, a cat is a type of animal, so it inherits animals' attributes and behavior while adding its own unique features. We now have learned that object-oriented programming, or OOP, organizes codes into objects, and inside it, attributes and behaviors are grouped and stored together. Aside from OOP, we also have what we call procedural programming. It is a straightforward and sequential approach in programming, where the computer is instructed step by step through procedures or functions. Basically, it's a first come first serve basis. Codes are executed by the order they are called and written, except when control structures are used. At first glance, we can already see the advantage of OOP. What do you think it is? Is it more organized? Correct! It is shorter and much more organized. Not only that, I can turn it to this, this, and this using the same program. I can even add a few more behaviors and change it from this to this. Scalable? You are absolutely right. It's reusable and scalable without the risk of spaghetti code. I want to ask, what do classes and objects 
objects mean? Do they mean school classes and any kind of objects? Aha! Let me teach you some important keywords in OOP. Let's start with the class. Do you know what a blueprint is and what it does? Of course! It's a designer guide for doing something. Good. Think of classes like a blueprint. A class contains attributes like name and age and behaviors like say meow or do hunt that guide the program of what it'll look like and how it'll look. How about the object? That makes an object the concrete representation of the class. Basically, the actual thing created from the class. Do you remember how classes are like blueprints? Yes! Basically, the objects are what we make from those blueprints. You can also create multiple instances of a class through object creation. Really? But how? Say for example, we have a cat class. We instantiate it by typing cat kitten equals new cat. And there you have it. You successfully created an object. You can even create lots of objects and it will stay unique each time, either because they possess different states or their memory allocation. Flexible OP is. Exactly. Thank you so much. Now I understand OP much better.